So you're a hip hop type of person. Dare I say you was a without really getting to it, which can you can you would you classify classify yourself as tomboy ish? Yes, definitely. All right. Yes. Well, I see how you you carry. I see how you dress. I see how you carry yourself. I'm like she is super duper laid back, which is a good quality to have. Like you don't always have to be all dolled up or whatever the case may be. Like how work? Like where are you from? What tell us about Cali Bad for those who don't know? Outside that you don't like R and B. <laughs> well, Cali Bev is an eighty baby, not eighties baby, but an eighty baby. Last mm-hmm. of the Gen X. Um, I grew up in uh, Harbor City, California, which is about five minutes outside of Carson. So basically the same thing. Um, I went to a nerd high school. I went to a math and science academy when I was in high school. Um, I used to I used to dance, and I learned that if you just say I used to dance, living in the South, they automatically think of a pole and some clear heels. So, um, no, not that kind of dance. Um, I used to dance like ballet and jazz, and I tap danced for a little bit, and of course, hip hop. Uh, mm-hmm. Moved to moved to Atlanta um, in two thousand. Um, I met my husband um, later on that year, although I did go back to Cali for the summer. And then I came back like in August. And I met him like right after my 20th birthday. Like days okay. after my 20th birthday. And oh, that's cute. so is the rest of my life here in Atlanta, planting my roots. Nice, Got my mom to move out here. <laughs> oh, you can miles then. I haven't been to Atlanta since 2000 and Jesus, 2011, 2010, 2011, I think. Uh, a lot of, I tell people, it's a it's, Atlanta's different. You feel you feel something just walking down the street than what you will feel everywhere else. So, what about Atlanta made you say, you know, I'm gonna reside here? Um, it was pretty much just like LA. It's a you know, minus the beaches for the most part. Um, and I had a culture shock when I moved out here, though. Um, all these black people, I'm like, okay, it's a bunch of black people here, but I don't see a bunch of anybody else here, like how I see in LA. Mm. So that was a culture shock for me, most definitely. Um, and, um, and the, and the club scene out here is way better, in my opinion, just because if they stay open later, I'll lay it. I- how late? Well, um, back in the nineties, the in, well at, in the nineteen hundreds, as my kids would say. Oh, they're um, wrong for that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but back in the nineties, the clubs the clubs would close um, in LA at like around maybe two, maybe three o'clock, if I remember correctly. Mm. I think it was three o'clock. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't no four o'clock. Um, but out here, you know, um, you got after party spots and stuff like that. The only difference is when I first moved out here, I was really disappointed because most of the clubs here in Atlanta were 21 and over. But I moved out here when I was 19. So it's like, eh. so I went and got me a fake ID. Just I know, I know. To get into I know. Club 112 and never used it actually. I never even used the fake ID. I never been to one um, to 112. I'm a little disappointed in that. Mm. But um, yeah. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and um, like back in LA, you know, you can there is a spot for 16 and older, um, mm-hmm. off of Crenshaw, and I definitely miss rolling down the Shaw. <laughs> but I heard that's not even a thing anymore. I heard everybody's down on like um, Hollywood Boulevard and stuff like that now. I heard the Shaw ain't even cracking like how it was, but you know, I can only go off of what my cousins tell me. Okay, well, you gotta trust family. <laughs> so. You so you had a fake ID. You about the typical '90s teenager is the vibe I got from you. That's this is all I was like, yep. Because 
as soon as you said 21, I said, she got a fake ID. I know, yep. I know. And it was an Indiana fake ID, too. I didn't even know what an Indiana fake ID looked like. I just knew the Cali one did not look real at all whatsoever. <laughs> so I got to, oh. to pick another state. It was on some any, many, mighty, mo stuff. Uh, they were like, hey, you this Indiana Indiana ID. You've been coming here for a whole year. You don't want to change your ID, upgrade to a Georgia ID? Oh, y'all had the dumbest bouncers in history. Well, actually, I kept my Cali ID for like over a year. Cause just because I didn't want to switch it, so I had I was rolling around Atlanta with Cali plates and the Cali um, driver's license for a minute. I didn't change my stuff over until um, after I came back from LA. I got a ticket down to Shaw because, like, out here you don't need a front license plate in Atlanta, but in California right. you need both license plates. So while I was here, I took my front license plate off, got me like a um, a, a, a customized plate. It was a Honda plate black with a chrome honda symbol in the middle i had a civic by the way a typical oh, uh you're not, you're not, you're not <laughs> yep i had a two-door black civic and it was hard i changed out my blinkers in the front turned them to red blinkers my dome light was red i took off my honda symbol on the back and glued it onto my gas tank so it looked like like a little tag almost on my gas tank and i had a red honda symbol in the back i put that on mm-hmm. there and me and my yeah. best friends um, me and my best friend she she did her Honda Accord with blue and I did my Civic with red and those who are watching who are watching live or watching this back on replay one thing I can tell you I, this is going to be sad to say I bet you she had better she probably had the hardest car better than most of the dudes out there I wish I wanted to be a part of this club for the longest called Honda Heavens. I really did, but I didn't know anybody in there and I definitely didn't have the money to suit my stuff up like they did. But I did have two 12s in my trunk. Well, as long as you got the knockers, so that's all that matters. <laughs> that is that is interesting. Atlanta in the 90s. That, that is, that well, is no, so I didn't move out here to the 2000, but I, I am mean, definitely the 90s kid. I, Mm-hmm. So, I'll, I'll, okay, 2000, the double O's in Orlando. I wanted to be, definitely wanted to be there during that time. But of course, when I went down there, it was on a Christian conference. And there were some places in Orlando I was not allowed to go, obviously. Didn't care about that the following year when I was in New Orleans, but we'll talk about that later. 